So in case if you didn't notice, a certain virus has kind of put the United States on hold for essentially the past year. Big shout out to the government and people who won't wear masks <clears throat> for making this last way longer than it needed to. I'm sure all the dead people really appreciate it. Thanks for the help. But on the bright side slash depressing side, going to traditional shows hasn't really been a thing since March, which is a smart and responsible move that helps keep thousands of people safe, but like it sucks though. <laughs> and to combat that suckiness, virtual concerts and live streams have really been blowing up, but the big question is, are they worth it? First off, I just gotta make this clear. What people want out of a show varies depending on the genre and the community surrounding the music. I don't exactly think that a 14 year old going to go see Imagine Dragons in a stadium is very comparable to a bunch of disc rockers getting shit faced in a basement and yelling about war. So I'm going to be focusing mostly on the heavier DIY side of music, but everything that I say will transcend over to pretty much any type of show. And we all know that shows and concerts are two different things, but I will be using them interchangeably throughout this video just because they have a similar enough goal and it just makes my job easier, so bear with me. For this experiment, I'll be attending a few live shows, but before we get to that, we have to break down what exactly makes an in-person concert so appealing to begin with. What makes a show good is a long list of things. There's being around a bunch of people who have a similar interest slash lifestyle choice. You can make friends, get laid, etc. You're seeing the band in person. You're vibing to live music. And in addition to that, you're vibing to live music with a bunch of other people. You can get rough and rowdy. Usually there's tour exclusive merchandise. Depending on the type of show, there's usually some sort of visual spectacle like lights, fog, etc. And for smaller shows, you pretty much always get to meet the band considering they're like two feet in front of you. Now let's break down all the fun and appealing aspect of live shows that are also present in virtual shows. That's it. Only about one and a half things actually cross over to virtual concerts and that's fucking, that sucks. <laughs> Technically, this isn't even really a virtual concert or a virtual show. This is just a quick live stream for the fans, but I did feel like it was important to talk about considering there's been so many of these lately. I feel like it's important to include the worst before we get to the best. First off, let's start with the good. There's solid musical performances, pretty decent sound, all things considered, and there was no technical issues. But despite the riffs being so incredibly tasty, um, you're still staring at the back of some dude's head for half the fucking stream. Granted, this is what actual concert experiences typically look like, but it's not like we want to experience this digitally. Little to essentially no visual stimulation, no crowd interaction to help cover up lack of showmanship, and there were some lulls that were pretty hard to get past. Lulls are fine for a concert setting because the band is tired and they need a break and the audience is tired and we need a break, but in a virtual setting we don't need a break. We're at home, so we're just watching a bunch of dudes sip water for two minutes and it's boring. <laughs> I call this style of virtual concert, hey Dave, set up your phone and let's film a jam sesh, and it gets a 2 out of 10. It's not the band's fault at all, by the way, it's just the format. Most of these live streams are just quick, easily accessible, and low effort, which is totally fine, but it's miles away from being able to scratch the concert itch and is sadly not really worth more than a few minutes of your time. Holy shit, this was a good show. Multiple camera angles, stimulating stage production. It sounded awesome, like they could totally just get the audio from this live stream and release it as a live album. They played tons of exclusive, which really made the price of the ticket more worthwhile because it's a truly unique experience. Killer stage presence and the lulls that I discussed previously were all covered up by B-roll, so instead of watching people take sips of water, you get cool shots of pumpkins and the stage and various shit like that, which keeps your interest. This shit gets it like an 8.5 out of 10 on the scratching the concert itch scale. Now I'm not gonna bore you with a review of every single show I attended, but if you wanna know my review, you can pause. Here they are. A lot of them were solid, but most of them were just okay, and I think the reason being is that they all had one glaring issue. And it's probably the biggest issue that comes out of all virtual shows. So let's talk about it. As I talked about earlier in this video, shows have a lot of appealing aspects that combine to make a great show, but virtual concerts really pretty much only have live music to stand on. Live music is fantastic if you have a pre-existing emotional connection to the music that's being played. But if that pre-existing connection isn't there, like it's a song you're unfamiliar with or just a song that you don't really like, then all the appeal of a virtual concert is pretty much gone. The highest rated show I went to was the Motionless and White one where they played this album in its entirety. This album is 10 years old and a classic, and I personally love every single song on this album, and therefore by extension that means that I loved every single minute of the stream. But for Code Orange on the other hand, I love everything from the Kids era to the I Am King era because I found out about them in about 2014. But for the live stream they mostly played new stuff which I don't really have much of a personal connection to. And I kind of found myself being 
being bored and checking my phone during the stream. I'm sorry guys. Same with all these bands. I'm only a casual fan and therefore music alone isn't enough to catch and hold my attention, you know? This isn't really an issue for in-person shows and concerts because there are other appealing aspects to help keep everyone's attention, but virtual concerts kinda don't really have any crutches to lean on here. In conclusion, are virtual concerts worth it? Sometimes? If you have a legitimate connection to the band's music, uh, it has a decent production quality, and you can afford it or it's free, then yeah, you absolutely should. But if you're a casual fan, or the production quality isn't that good, or if it's a little bit pricey for what you'd like, then I would just skip it. DIY is great for live performances, but awful for virtual ones. The standard for virtual shows is typically much higher than what DIY is capable of sometimes. On one hand, virtual concerts are nice, but also Hate 5 6 is free, and sometimes arguably better. If you're a good sized band and you're looking to do a virtual concert, here's some of the things that you absolutely need to have. Good production levels, good sound, more than one camera angle, I'm begging you, and you have to stick to your best slash most popular material. And if you're looking for a cameraman, I have over five years of concert photography and videography experience, so I hit me up just saying. Just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> but if you're a small DIY band and you're looking to do a live stream, honestly, Probably don't, because it won't be very good, sorry. <laughs> if you choose the Hey Dave, prop up your phone and let's film a jam sesh style of live stream, don't really expect anyone to stay for more than a minute or two. And most importantly, please wear a goddamn mask and be fucking smart so we could all go back to going to shows again. <clears throat> oh my god. Sorry. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing, that'd be cool. But if not, you know, then don't worry about it, you're just a horrible person. But in all seriousness, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a good day, and uh, yeah. <laughs>